now have the marketing, and I would like to introduce Tammy McQueen, and um, wrote, wrote, wrote something for all of the, uh, the folks. So Tammy McQueen moved from her native South Africa uh, to the States on a tennis scholarship. Uh, after her collegiate career was over, uh, she doubled down on marketing, communications, and branding. She spent three years as the director of marketing for Sales Loft, where some amazing marketing campaigns were enacted, like the fake Mark Benioff. Since her days at Sales Loft, she has co-founded 31 South, which is a full-service marketing agency uh, that works with dozens of SaaS companies on going to market locally and on the West Coast. Please welcome Tammy McQueen. Good afternoon, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having some old OG sales lofters in the back there. <laughs> um, thank you so much for having me. I would love to just walk you through a little bit about what I've done in the past, what I'm currently working on, and how you can apply a lot of these SaaS principles to what you're doing today. Um, so I'm not from around here. Um, I am originally from Johannesburg, South Africa. I was born and raised. I played tennis competitively growing up. There's a point at which you reach five foot two and you're not going pro. So I uh, played Division I tennis in Kentucky. Moved around a little bit and I have called Atlanta home for the past eight years. Um, my background goes everywhere from corporate America nonprofit world that really moves um, and tugs on the heartstrings quite a bit and that infiltrates in a lot of what I do, um, to Sales Loft and now at 31 South. Um, a little bit of background, I am on the board of directors for The Cooler Project. It is a nonprofit that invests in families and businesses in East Africa as well as the Global Conservation Corps where we focus on um, protecting rhinos in southern Africa. And I run the global social media for Women Who Code, 137,000 members globally in 60 cities and 20 countries. So definitely trying to bridge the, the nonprofit with the startup um, hustle as well. All right, 31 South, um, we are a full service creative marketing and ad agency. We are based here in the tech village. Uh, we have clients that we serve across the US and a few um, in different parts of the world as well. Have an incredible group of founders that bring a vast background to the table and would love to talk to you a little bit more about it afterwards. Um, and so today, what I want to talk to you about as well as not what only what we've done at Sales Loft and leading to today, but also key takeaways that you can look at that are tangible, that you're gonna walk away from the next, I think I'm at 18 minutes right now, um, and really put those in your pocket and put them to use immediately. Because all too often I think a lot of us, and this is why I love what Atlanta Ventures has done with the SaaS forum, is allow you to take takeaways from each of these rapid fire sessions and put them to work immediately. Before you boo me out the room, I really want to tell you about why B2B companies just don't get it. They don't. They have a lot of resources at hand, everything that they could possibly have. They have a great talent pool, whether you're here in Atlanta or on the West Coast in the Bay Area, you have great resources to talent. It is the thing to do, join a startup. You want to hustle hard, get the great experience, work with incredible people who have done it before. But what I want to talk about is that B2B companies just don't get it in marketing. And this is why. It is so important for companies to create meaningful connections that go beyond the surface, that are truly, truly authentic and transparent in their communications. And this is why brands need to start behaving like people and really look at it from an empathetic standpoint. And this is why I think innovation has been stifled. We are heavily focused on the metrics. We are heavily focused at how we are influencing revenue and why I think that is incredibly important that we know at what stage of the funnel we are influencing the overall revenue, the overall growth of the company and scale. 
we cannot lose sight of how we are truly um, impacting a brand through the art of persuasion. And I do believe that this is a lost uh, art form right now because the B2C companies that you see in the market are truly focused on an empathetic approach, understanding what it is that makes their consumer tick. And all too often in marketing, in B2B, we look at what we want to do. I've been there, I've done it, I've been um, on the wrong side of it and done something that I wanted to do in a B2B marketing sense that was not right for the consumer. And I think that's what we really need to stay focused on. And so we need to start communicating like humans, not just pushing our products, not just selling what we are selling, not just pushing a product. And I think that is where Sales Loft truly found a lot of success in the early days was being helpful, understanding what the problem was. When Sales Loft launched, we were at a point where the industry was not even thought of. Sales development industry was right at the cutting edge. And we started looking at how we can solve a problem. What is the challenge that people are facing? And talking to that. A lot of the content we produced gave insight on why the process was important. The process drove the sale of the product and really spoke to a lot of the initiatives that led the marketing at large. We understood the challenges that they were facing. We understood some of the problems in the industry. And that is how we leveraged a lot of the influences as well. And so as I talk through the three ways to humanize your brand and connect with your consumers, I'll give references to what some of the things we did at Sales Loft and what we're doing today as well. Create indelible experiences. This is so important for not only if you're hosting an event, listening to a roundtable with your customers, or really focusing on your influencers, your raving fans, but create these experiences that people will never forget. That experience does not start when they walk through those doors. That experience starts with the invite. How do you gain their attention? How do you bring them into the room that they cannot wait to be there? If they are traveling from another state to come to your event, you are so lucky that they decided to get on the plane and come to you. Treat them that way and create this experience that they will tell the story. Yes, I can tell you all the metrics of what we did at Sales Loft, but I can tell you the experiences we created that people are able to then share that story with others. And that is how the um, sort of the brand grows and amplifies with a lot of the trigger events that you're hosting, a lot of different applications for bringing your customers into a room and truly listening to them. What, that is your greatest source of how your product is going to scale. Creating indelible experiences was something that we did with Sales Loft Rainmaker. It started in 2015 with 200 people down the road at the W Buckhead. We had 200 people coming into the room, and I remember putting a line item on the budget saying, T-shirts, $1,200. Those T-shirts were not T-shirts. They were the Falcon's drum line, and we were going to just shake it up a little bit. So everyone was in the room, first Sales Loft Rainmaker, and shut out the lights and kicked them back on and, and came the Falcon's drumline. Truly gave a great start to the event, it got people fired up, woke them up, whatever it may be. And then found this momentum, what the team looked at was, how do we create this wow factor over and over? And it became something that, oh, what are they going to do next year? How are they going to top this? And so the following year, we had gospel choir come in and go down the aisles and really just get the crowd going. Um, the next year, hosted um, the Stomp Group, which has brooms on the stage and pieces of uh, trash cans and really just fired it up a little bit. And so this became a signature event. This year, Sales Loft really looked at how 
that experience spoke to the brand itself and to the community. And they hosted um, a, an acoustic singer on stage, which was truly a, a great bridge to what they do with the product and the company. And what you're going to see with all three of these ways to humanize your brand is going to build community and your brand. So I think that is something that we often don't think about when we're always tracking metrics. And I'm far off the charts of that, that indelible experience idea. And I'm willing to stand outside on the intersection here of Lenox and Piedmont with, a, with an iPad tracking leads if I need to, and getting you to fill out a form just so that we can create these um, different opportunities. Incorporate human-centric design. And generally what this means is being empathetic to who you are creating and designing for. Understand what it is that helps them ingrain and root into what is meaningful for their product, for their service, and for their community. Love the one you're with. I like to use the, the pun here, love the wine you're with. We're going to go with love the one you're with. And this is championing your customers. They are your number one most important thing you can do in your, in your organization. And how marketing plays such an important role in this is that there are so many ways that you can champion your customer. Whether you have limited resources or a million dollar budget, you can really find a way to make them feel special. Not only listen to the feedback that they are giving you, but something as small as sending them some cookies or leveraging something even larger, such as Sendoso or PFL, where they will send your customers and prospects at your different tiered accounts special goods to their office. And and it's not just about sending personalized golf balls. Think beyond that. Think about how can you send your biggest customer a roll-in guacamole cart or you know, margarita mix on a Friday afternoon for them to enjoy happy hour. No one's doing that in B2B. I can promise you that now. Send Freddy the Falcon with lunch. You know, do something that gets them to remember it, but do it for the whole team, not just your point of contact, not just your VP of sales and your CMO. Do it for the entire team because you know what? They're leveraging your product, they're using your service, and they need to feel loved too. Um, some things that we did at Sales Life for Rainmaker, we, um, in the dead of winter, got a pedicab in New York City. They don't operate in winter. So this pedicab was the only one in the streets of uh, New York City, decked it out, um, wrapped it in um, Rainmaker branding, went through the streets, and you'll see we made little um, fake sort of uh, tickets from New York to Atlanta. And we gave every one of our customers in New York a two free tickets to attend the conference. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity that looks at them, they look at us and they say, wow, they came up to New York just for us to give us free tickets to attend the event. That means a lot. If someone came and knocked on your door from San Francisco and gave you a free ticket to their event or something that they were doing, you would feel pretty special. Um, and I think it's important to show appreciation. If you're hosting an event at a conference, um, if you're going to Dreamforce or Inbound or one of these larger scale events, think about how you can really champion your customer at the event. They're all going to be there. Your prospects are going to be there, and so are your competitors. So think about hosting a little happy hour or um, a kickoff in the morning with mimosas and um, Bloody Marys and have it just for your customers in your booth or at a specific um, venue that's nearby. Everyone's going to be there. Everyone's going to want to feel loved and part of it. Again, builds community, builds brand. And one thing is innovation is not about following trends. I would really recommend that you don't look at your competitors all the time for your ideas on marketing. Everyone is creating ebooks, everyone's creating blogs, everyone's doing webinars. But how do you look beyond that? How do you create an opportunity for your own company that is not like your competitor, that you're not going to market like them? How can you look at a B2C industry? 
How can you look at nonprofits? Who are some of the brands that really grab your attention? There's a great startup based out of New Zealand called Allbirds, and their shoes are the, it's like walking on clouds. It's the most comfortable brand ever. And what they're doing is really unique. And looking at what they do from a B2B standpoint is, is really inspiring. It shows some innovation. And I would recommend that you start looking beyond your bubble and who's next to you and who's fighting you in that G2 crowd quadrants. Look beyond that. And think about true disruption in marketing, especially from a standpoint of what's never been done. And I'll tell you, more often than not, ideas are so easy. They are a dime a dozen, but executing on them and really having the guts to go for it is what differentiates you. You can have a ton of these ideas, but actually following through is probably one of the scariest things. It becomes a lot more scarier when you start investors involved and your board involved and really there's a little bit more red tape to that so when you when you're really breaking out I'd, I'd say go for it um, break the rules this is something that we did quite a bit at sales loft and we, we were a little bit cheeky about it I think when we were scrappy we had very little resources and it's truly one of my um, favorite stories as John mentioned um, about breaking the rules and the Benioff story, which I'll get to. But host a periphery event around one of the big conferences. All too often you're going to see that at an early stage I hear, how do we possibly afford 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars for a booth at Dreamforce? There are 100 thousand people, how do we stand out? If you're going to something specifically in your vertical, how do we stand out at Oracle World or Atlassian Summit? And I think one of the big things is you can truly captivate an audience with a periphery event around a trigger event. So what you need to do is look at how can you host a breakfast, a brunch, a whiskey tasting? How can you really captivate the people that are already there, the influencers who are there, and bring them to a location and host an event. And this is something we did just last week. We are currently doing the ICO, Initial Coin Offering for Monetizer, a textiles-based company on their six-city roadshow. And last week, 10,000 people joined, um, came to three back-to-back -back conferences in Puerto Rico where they truly wanted to restart the community. Still, 40 percent of people in Puerto Rico don't have electricity and power. And so what happened is these conferences came together and said, we're going to give back all the proceeds from the events and um, help restart the, the island. And so what we did was hosted an event on top of these three back-to-back -back conferences for Monetizer. We put a billboard up in Puerto Rico, everyone passes it, coming from the airport to the location where it was hosted on the initial days and when they were leaving. And so we found this gorgeous location that really worked well for people that were attending and created an experience for them for people that were attending. There was no pitching, there was no selling, it was truly come have a great time. And through a lot of the marketing, we were, looking to get 50 people to this event. At the day we opened up the doors last Thursday night, we had 452 signups. Um, and so that is truly through creating a great opportunity for people to come together, bring everyone, influencers in the industry together for a great night, have a great location, and follow up, create a cadence of emails that remind them, we're so glad you're going to be there three days you know, before the event, looking forward to it. These are the details, this is how you get there. The day of, a reminder, and immediately follow up with it as well, with whether it's your white paper, whether it is the next steps, join us on the next roadshow, whatever it may be. And get kicked out. This was um, my KPI for my very first event um, with Sales Loft. And, um, it worked in the very, very early days, and since um, we, we matured from what we did, it's always a fun story to tell, and um, there's a great post on it online about how we impersonated um, 
Mark Benioff and put out a Craigslist ad. Those were the, the sneakers that we impersonated and made. It was still this old sales off logo. Um, and so that was a lot of fun. I had an opportunity to eventually meet the real uh, Mark Benioff. And shout out to John Birdsong for posting sight to the fresh shaved Benioff grabbing breakfast with Japanese consulate at event. We got all the Atlanta companies um, Dreamforce that year to please post about this and created a great um, story. And that's a story, again, that creates an experience that we've told. I can't even tell you the number of times. I wish I had a, a dollar for every time I told that story. Um, and so be bold. I think uh, try new things. Um, give, it a, give it a shot. If you're scared to give, give the ideas a shot, try it. If you just do 10% of what that 100% of the idea is, I think you'll make a big impact. And look beyond B2B. Please try something new. Everyone is doing a blog, a white paper, a webinar. Let's look at how you can shake that up. Even in the delivery of that communication of how you do it, I'd give it a shot. And so I'd love to answer any questions. If I, if I want to continue the conversation, I'm available afterwards and on LinkedIn as well. So thank you so much. Let's give it up for Tammy. Woo.